هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos anesti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentit ni masi zoif karisamenos. Elated, the very fundamentals of uh, physics, what they with, with consider to be the fundamentals of physics, the laws of motion. Now, there have been adjustments to the laws of motion, particularly when you're dealing with quantum mechanics, you go, go, to, go to from Newtonian mechanics into quantum mechanics, and there's a, there's a real shift there. But the shift isn't there to sort of produce uh, a condition for uh, there being no God. It just simply, it says going, it's simply going from this absolute state where you have the laws of motion for Newton to now more of a situation of probability. Uh, and you also have now a relationship between mass and energy. You have conservation of mass, conservation of energy. It really hasn't fundamentally changed that the initiator, that, that external forces, or the need to balance forces, uh, and then you do this, if, if you're doing uh, particle experiments, right? one of the reasons why they do particle experiments, is they have to account for all the forces. And because your forces, your energies, and stuff like that, and, and that E equals mc squared, right? Uh, e, uh, e energy is equal mass at the, at, at the speed of light, right? Squared. Right? Uh, so uh, E is energy, M is mass, C is the uh, sp uh, speed of light, and that's you know, so E equals mc squared. E, uh, light and light is squared there. So this is how they put, they sort of equate energy to matter, and there you have a balance of uh, energy and matter there. You have that balance there, and when you do your, your equations, uh, you have a starting particle that you've sort of accelerated uh, in these accelerators, and you have to account for all the different energies. In addition to accounting for energy, you also have to account for masses. So when a particle breaks up, they have to look for all these different particles to see what's there or what's not there. And they do this by balancing these equations out between energy and matter. And this is why when you have to talk about dark energy, you also have to talk about dark matter. Or vice versa, when you talk about dark matter, you have to talk about dark energy because you have to have the conservation of matter and energy. In other words, this concept of having a balanced universe goes all the way into the core of quantum mechanics and into superstring theory. So what happens is, when you remove God from the equation, and again, this is not specifying the type of God that you have, it's simply saying a God, without going into any further detail, you see that it's actually in the, in, in the equations of physics that God is there. And they, they haven't been able to prove that God is, doesn't exist. And, and one of the reasons why is that they have this problem uh, with the conservation of energy and conservation of mass. This is the problem with the Higgs boson. The thing, yeah, you find the Higgs boson, okay, but where did the Higgs boson come from? Without, again, you have to, you have to answer this question without violating the uh, conserv conservation of energy and conservation of mass. And you can't do it. So it always runs back to with this, let's describe as a god. And so what happens is because now, and with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle with quantum mechanics, you can no longer state that there is no god. You can only do this in, in degrees of probability. That, 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 well, there might be a god, there might not be a god. Sort of un, un, unknown. And so what happens is this moves into, a, by definition, this moves into agnosticism. Agnosticism is the fundamental concept that there may or may not be a god, and you're kind of fuzzy about it. And so, the one, let's say you're the type of a person who you're, fu you, you're fuzzy about it, but you're more leaning towards the side that may, there might not be a god, right? Right. There's ones you're leaning towards the side that you are that there is a god. So if there's a if there's a god, and but you're not too sure about what type of god is out there or uh, how you define what god is. Uh, then you are a, a, the, a, a, a theistic. Uh, you're into theistic uh, agnosticism. If you are 
and this is sort of breaking down the fun double turns. Let's say, and let's say now you're on the on on, on the sort of the side there that you may think that there might not be a God. Then you're in the atheistic agnosticism. So the whole thing now, the whole equation, the question, instead of being, uh, and this is due to quantum mechanics, instead of being atheism and agnosticism, atheism comes in as a section of agnosticism. So it's still, it's still uh, within the whole, call the, the, call the, the, the theological arguments there. And the thing is, what, what's brought up a lot of times in these textbooks, and this, this is where I'm looking at this, sort of these texts online, and this was from the uh, University of Tennessee that I was looking at one of the web pages, but they, they, they were flexed all over the place. Like, you know, whether it's Harvard or whatever it is, because uh, Harvard has their stuff online, MIT has their stuff online, a large chunk of university now start putting, the, start putting their stuff online. And uh, you look at it, and it's always this whole, comes down to this whole thing. Galileo and the church, right? Uh, Galileo's challenge of of the church, that of the church's authority uh, through his his uh, assault on the uh, Aristotelian uh, concept uh, uh, of the universe of the universe, eventually got him into deep. Uh, now here's here's the interesting part. The interesting part here. The church at at this what they're talking about the church's authority, right? is basing their, their work on Aristotle. And this is the Roman Catholic Church. you got to remember this is the Roman Catholic This is after 1000 AD. This is in the time of the, of the Inquisition that the, uh, the, the, the Catholics had in, installed. They were going after and cre creating these sort of these, correcting these so-called mistakes. And it said that Aristotle's views of the universe were absolute and cannot be challenged because they are godly. In other words, they raise uh, abs uh, Aristotle up to the level of a saint. Uh, introduced him as uh, the basis for all nature, as how you understand nature, and said Arist Aristotle's uh, uh, understanding of things, or, or, well, what they call Aristotle's understanding of things as the absolute truth. But the thing is, is that when you go back and actually look at Aristotle's work and you have an understanding of Aristotle, it wasn't Aristotle himself that had the, that, that had the problem there. Again, this was, and this is what in many cases, is the interpretation of Aristotle's work. In other words, Galileo wasn't opposing, uh, didn't really, if you look at his work, didn't, didn't oppose or correct or assault the work done by Aristotle. He actually confirmed it. He just added, added more detail. He adds a little, another layer of detail to the work that, that Aristotle had done. And Aristotle was an experimentalist. He didn't, wasn't simply a, the, a theoretical, uh, you know, he wasn't simply a theorist who was thinking about ideas. Uh, this has been found and shown that Aristotle was an experimentalist. He actually went out and explored. I mean, this is what, part of what he did with, with Alexander the Great. People don't understand that Alexander and, and Alexander the Great and Aristotle, they're the ones who created the Hellenic Empire. And is this work that that not all of it but bits and pieces come through into Italy in that in those years and this is after the Byzantine Empire is starting to collapse and you what you have and you have is uh, you have the books the writings leaking into the Western sphere uh, into Europe and creating new libraries that, that most Europeans have never seen before. And new ideas are flooding in, and the paper. This is where the Inquisition starts. You know, the, the papacy starts the uh, starts the problem by initially going in to the Middle East and conquering the, all those areas, and then brought back huge libraries with the, with the Knights Templar, right? The Knights Hostler, the, the sort of the Teutonic Knights. They created these knights. They went in. They looted. They looted the Middle East and came back with all these libraries. Then they had a problem. Because not all the libraries had all the ideas that the Roman Catholic Church wanted, and these ideas started spreading like wildfire, and, they, and the Inquisition was an attempt to put out all these different ideas that came into uh, the West, and produced what we have today. Uh, and this is, the Inquisition was this sort of attempt to put out these fires, and, and <laughs> the Inquisition 
set up all the schools that are now consider themselves to be secular and humanist. Those schools were all set up during the Inquisition. These are how old these schools are. And you can see there was a shift, between, and we'll talk about this later, we'll talk about the shift from the Inquisition, the, the unit schools set up for the Inquisition, and the, the different universities, like, like the University of Sorbonne, and how they eventually became uh, secular. And it's all on this, these views, these observations, that because they couldn't see her, there were things missing from the observations. They came to the conclusions they came to. And I'll show you that the observation can either be apparent or it can be a little bit more than apparent. But it can never be the absolute truth because there's always things you don't see. And this is what the argument here is. When you can go back and compare the work done by the Alexandrian astronomers in Egypt in terms of uh, creating the calendar and compare it today, uh, well, actually to, to, uh, to our, our, our sort of time period, if you will, to, uh, to Hubble, and his view on the expanding universe. They're both observations. And it was found out later on that the observation of the uh, like Alexandrian astronomers were wrong. We were not, the Earth was not at the center. But if you wanted to create a calendar, you wanted to create this sort of uh, uh, map of time and space, and you're doing it from the geocentric point of view, because it's, it's always done from our, our perspective, right? Because you're sailing around the world. You don't want something that has to, to do with that, that's related to Mars or the Sun or something like that. You want something that's earth sent and Earth-related. And so this is why they didn't really care whether it was geocentric or not, because they were using a specific... They weren't actually using it for uh, theoretical purposes. They weren't doing it for, uh, for abstract science. They were looking at it for practical purposes, because they were using these, map, these uh, charts to sail with. And so the charts had to be accurate so you can, take, you can take a boat from one place to another. Or you can walk from one place to another. You can take, the, you know, the, 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 uh, find a place along the Silk Road. They were also building monuments. The, 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 uh, the uh, Egyptian pyramids were all, all built on the alignment with the stars. They were all lined up with uh, various different constellations. And if you wanted to do that, you needed to have a good map of the heavens, a good map of the stars. And this is what they produced. And you can go back, you can go to, Ga not to Galileo, but you can go to Gauss, a mathematician named Gauss, to show that the work by the Alexandrian, the Alexandrian astronomers was, was significantly better than, than, than what was done by the Europeans. And it's simply because, in terms of the data points, the Europeans maybe had uh, 50 years worth of data points, where the Alexandrian astronomers had more than 3,000 years worth of uh, uh, data points. And from, from a Gauss's understanding of, of error analysis, and trying to meet, meet, meet up the, the sort of repeat your experiments over and over and get, get multiple measurements. When if you have 3,000 years worth of data points, your accuracy is going to be significantly better than if you only have 50 years of data points. And so what happens is now we're, we're talking about our understanding of the universe. We're talking about how Galileo viewed the church. And again, didn't understand that there was beyond the church, that there's more... The, the, the church is is has need needs to be uh, identified and defined to a specific ear in time, and that there was prior to the church what they describe as the church. And this is what a lot of atheists understand that there's more to the church than there is, than than this was than what's being represented. And the gateway to this understanding. Is through, is through ancient Greek or through the church Greek that, that, that I study that I'm going to. This gets you behind, the church that I go to gets you behind the papacy, behind the authority of the church and gets you into studying the antiquities. It gets you into the world of antiquities. This is where the key comes in for, uh, the, work that, for, the, for my, the work I'm doing in my own backyard. I didn't realize when I was younger that I was sitting on essentially a museum, an archive of ancient history. And so when you look at this and you say, oh, well, yeah, what's there? You see that there's a huge archive of materials and you start, beginning, you start digging away at the materials. It's hard now to start trying to reconcile 
well, how does the science line up with the uh, with the, with the with the theology I'm seeing? And the way it lines up is is one through quantum mechanics, and then two uh, through M theory, which talks about uh, the uh, parallel universes. Well, uh, a spiritual universe can be certainly considered to be a parallel universe. And the thing is, the question is, are we talking about? Uh, do we see this sort of popping up in uh, in the Bible in 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 the uh, the ancient church? And the answer is yes. You do see. A, uh, an understanding of parallel universes, or, or uh, seemingly anyways, uh, popping up in the Gospels, popping up in the Old Testament, and that you have uh, this argument now that we have, we should be able to have, if we go back into history, look at, anthropo look at uh, uh, cultural anthropology, uh, and anthropology itself, we can put together an understanding to see whether or not there was something observable there about a hidden or parallel universe. Just in the same way, if we were going to look for a black hole, we would look for uh, uh, the sort of the effect on the material and the surrounding environment, and then we would start looking for. Is, is, we, 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 we look for uh, an effect on the environment that has no seen initiator. In other words. The black hole is your initiate. It's the force that's acting on the surrounding matter of the, 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 the of the matter that surrounds it. So we can we could look at it initially and see that oh that's a star there. You look at it, you see the mass is around the star, and oh core, so you look for the core the core there. You expect to see a star in the core, but at the core you see nothing. It's black. It's a black hole. Well, this is the same thing here when you're looking at the spiritual universe. We're looking for the effect first because we can't see everything there. If we see an effect that does not have a, a sort of pointed source that's visible, we're now looking at something that's outside of our regular universe, outside our, our physical universe, and we're looking at, maybe, possibly, a spiritual universe. And then we can go in and start saying, okay, well, if this is what the case is, and then you can start sort of expanding and not saying, are there other examples of this? And as you start going through and adding these examples together, you can start beginning to say, okay, well, Maybe we've got something here, and start looking at some. Maybe uh, looking back and, and so okay, let's uh, start putting together some mathematical mathematical models. Because if you have a pattern there, in particular, you can start developing mathematical models. Again, understanding that the mathematical model will only give you an approximate. It will only give you this what we call the standard or overviewed traits of this particular object. It's not going to give you a lot of specific. In other words, our knowledge is going to be asymptotic. Is going to still be within the sphere of quantum mechanics, where it is a, a anti-logical understanding of things, because you're not getting a full absolute, but you're getting a partial understanding, and your understanding is always going to be in this particular limit. It's going to be in, in the limit of things, and so now you're talking about the fundamentals of calculus. Uh, anyways, I think I'm going to leave this here for now. I think I've got enough for to, to 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 go forward uh, in, into um, uh, later on today. That's, but that's the thing, what I'm working on now. Uh, it's going to split off into two different types of vlogs. Uh, probably sometime this week will end up being something like that. Anyways, I will see you in the uh, next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Real's BTS Vlogs. Alright, have a good day. Welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Real's uh, BTS Vlog. Let me give you time and date stamp. It is 2 hours and 12 minutes into the day of... Tuesday, May 24th, uh, 2016. Yeah. It's officially uh, Canada's, uh, well, Victoria Day. But let me first say the proper hello to you. Please also nasty. Messiah come. And Christ is risen. Uh, I got up around 9 o'clock. Uh... Uh, couldn't sleep after that. I uh, had something to eat. Uh, uploaded the 50th episode. Yep, we've gone past the 50th episode already. That was the, the one that's prior to this. We're somewhat on schedule. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, if it is, if there's no up, uh, uploads for a couple of days, that's because uh, uh, there was simply not, wasn't enough to film. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, that... Uh, uh, but the cool thing was is that uh, the, the router problems are now solved, more or less. Let's hope it stays this way, but... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
Well, they're solved. Um, my understanding of what was happening was that I had set the uh, QoS um, upload speed too high. Uh, I have uh, 10 megabit, megabit per second up, uh, but I set the QoS at 10 megabit per second. I realized I needed because this is what I did. I, I set it to uh, uh, I set it to temp uh, ten percent within uh, of of the full amount. So uh, instead of doing a ten megabit per second setting the QoS, I set the QoS at uh, nine megabits per second, and all the problems disappeared. So uh, that was a good thing. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Huh. That helped me move forward, but <coughs> but I still have an issue of um, I still have an issue where when one vlog doesn't have enough space, I have to split the vlog between two different uh, uh, points. Two different two, two different episodes, and unfortunately, because we're doing this raw, and not editing this, um, and this is something that needs to be understood. We are raw; we're not edited. This is what ad hoc notes are. This is a, the the a, a scientific log is not supposed to be edited. It's supposed to be as is, and this is why it's raw. This is why it's unedited, and you see all the mistakes, and there you see all my fidgeting. All, you know, you see everything, because this is the way a scientific log is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the raw notes. And so what happens is that you'll have a segment ending abruptly, and then here comes the uh, ending thing, the ending slate, and you go, where's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it's coming in the next episode. And you'll see in the beginning of the next episode, it's not going to have the, 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 the beginning part, oh, welcome back to the next segment of, of, uh, B, uh, of uh, Big Bang Theory, else BTS Flock. You're not going to have that. Nor are you going to have a time and date stamp. It's going to be the continuation of... Uh, the last clip, and this is because uh, what the uh, camera does when you transfer it to the computer is it it just splits it up into three different files. If a if a file is over ten minutes in length, it split it splits up into uh, however long files. It, 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 the maximum file uh, that I have on here is basically ten minutes. So uh, <coughs> that's the maximum length. So if I do let's say thirty minutes. And the last discussion on uh, uh, going into agnosticism, moving atheism into agnosticism, um, that took uh, 27 minutes. That was a 27-minute discussion. And so only the first segment of it was actually put into uh, the 50th episode. Now, the second segment will come in uh, after this here. And so what I thought to do for now for this uh uh, segment is to simply give a definition of going into sort of the agnosticism and seeing where the, <coughs> the definitions that will sort of come under uh, agnosticism because again now we can't have the absolute statement because you can't have the absolute statement there is no God that moves atheism under agnosticism agnosticism means to be uncertain to have uh, 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 you know is it, 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 it allows for this sort of questioning uh, so you don't have the absolute certainty uh, and so you have uh, the atheistic, which is the sort of the well, there might not be a god. That's your side. Of, that's the, that side of the equation. Uh, there are the pantheistic, and that's, and that's pantheism. These are people who believe that the the all gods are the same god. And doesn't matter which direction you go in. Everything's all all the same. It's all so it's all good. You know, uh, the Roman Empire was like this. The Roman Empire, as long as you went to pray to one of the gods uh, uh, that the state approved of, then Everything's all great, and if you didn't pray to a god that was that was approved by the state, that would cause a lot of problems. This is you know this is how the Christians ended up in the stadiums. It ended up being sort of being part of the circuses uh, that the Romans had and being executed in these circuses uh, was because they refused to go into the pantheon and pay homage to one of the gods. And they, we only have one god, and that's all there is. The next type is the poly, uh, a polytheistic god, and this is a religion like Hinduism that has a lot of different gods, 
But some of these gods have specific points where they want you to believe specifically in that particular cult. In other words, there isn't a, a sort of a pantheistic view of all these gods. It's more of a, a cult view of one god or another. So that's pantheism, and, or pantheistic agnosticism. And then you have, in, in your... Uh, also on the agnostic side of things, you have the monotheistic, the, the single god concept. Now, the commonality that has, in terms of the sort of the theistic aspect of uh, agnosticism, as opposed to the anti-theistic or atheistic uh, view of ag agnosticism, is there's a sense of magic there. It's the, all these, the one thing that, that, that pantheism, polytheism, and monotheism under agnosticism have is that they're all, the, common out, the common thread is magic. It's an understanding, and, and this is, I'm not talking about magic as in a magician, I'm talking about, uh, you know, as entertainment, I'm talking about the uh, Illuminati, I'm talking about Satanism, I'm talking about Luciferianism, all these different groups, that, uh, uh, including Hinduism, that believe in magic, believe in bad luck and bad spirits and bad omens. Um, this cult comes under that umbrella of agnosticism, uh, and it depends on where you are in agnosticism, whether it's uh, pantheistic, polytheistic, or monotheistic that sort of determines uh, how these things kind of line up. But I think we need to start going into a definition uh, of these, sort of getting into the definition of where these different things are, start sort of opening up that path there. Uh, the, the other definition that we have to take a look at and look at Christians, understand that there is two different Christianities. Uh, so when you're talking, most people talk about Christianity, they talk about the church, uh, they talk about, talk, about, talk about the confrontation between Galileo and the church. Well, they're talking about a very specific part of the church, even though they're not giving you the name of it. Uh, you need to understand that they're talking about the papal church, which which began at 1000 AD. 1000 AD is really when the papal church really began. Uh, it was separate from the early Christian church. Uh, the early Christian church, the pre-papal Christian church, had two spark parts to it. One was quantum, and actually because it matches up with a lot of the quantum theory and quantum physics. And the other one was linear. The, the original... Uh, 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 the original Christ, the fu the fundamentals of Christ, was was quantum. You couldn't separate uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You couldn't you, you couldn't create them as a linear being, as one higher than the other. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what uh, the other uh, monotheistic religions started doing. It, it, it sort of branches of Christianity, even back in the uh, pre-papal times. Uh, this is prior to 1000 AD, is they try to start splitting up the Holy Trinity into logical uh, uh, structure, and that's called, called a linear God. And this is where sort of uh, the papacy took off. Instead of going back to the early Christian fathers, the Eastern Christian fathers, which were all on, under the quantum branch, they went into uh, the Arist Aristotelian branch of the church and said, okay, the Aristotelian branch of the church, uh, everything based off of Aristotle and the logic of Aristotle, this is how they, they understood God in forms of human logic. And this is where you have, uh, this is why you have humanism coming out. It's because, well, why, if, if, if everything is done in the face of humanity, that, that God is human, we, we create God from our own mind, then why is there a God outside? And this is sort of the birth of humanism, this is the birth of atheism. Or it all comes out of this sort of question that the people, the that the papacy took, took back in 1000 AD, saying that they're rejecting a god outside of the human mind, but a god that is within the human mind—that's the Aristotelian uh, logical god or the linear god, as opposed to the quantum god, which sits outside, sits beyond the understanding of human being in terms of this fullness that we can only approach an understanding in the limit. And there are things that we can see. But we cannot under, uh, 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 understand. It's just the way we look at uh, the duality of uh, light and uh, of uh, light uh, as a particle and a wave. That type of duality that we see in physics, uh, the same type of duality exists with the Holy Trinity. And but this was rejected by uh, the uh, uh, some of the particular people who want to be logical. And as this was rejected, you had a linear base starting up that pulled itself back onto the Aristotelian path, a logical path, and created a god that was within the human mind. And this is where the papacy took off of, it took off of that path, and it developed further into developing uh, the what we consider the, the uh, European sphere of Christianity. And this is what most people, when we talk about uh, atheists, most atheists have no concept of the early Christian church. We're not, the, the, the video of the, of the church that I was in is pre-papal. 
That's why it was, that's my backyard. I've been going there since I was a kid. But it didn't, wasn't realized as I sat down and started going through some of the text and, and doing some of the translation, understanding, because I also understand the, the cultural background, I started doing some of the translation that, you know, hey, this is a quantum God. It's not a logical linear God. And the differences between the two uh, Christianities is one is logical and, and linear, and the other one is quantum. And so this needs to be explored further. And then what I'm doing is I've explored it further. What I'm doing now is preparing the presentation for you guys. Uh, I would need to present the findings of my work so far over these last 25 years. This is what I'm doing now. I'm presenting the findings. And it's going to step forward with this thing. And this is the progress that you're seeing. You're seeing the development of this understanding. So, uh, Anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now. And I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory. I'll BTS vlog. Democratic Earth. Earth.